So this is where we use DSA main. So let's fire up another window. Sorry. sorry. Just go into here a second because I want the. Um, oh. I'm just lazy. So we're going to use DSA main, DB path. And then remember, I need to give it a port. So I'm going to offer the LDAP service over uh, 51, 389. So that's now running. And it writes an event log. And I can't close this. But at this point now, I actually have that snapshot I took available. So let's fire up AD user and computers, for example. As my users, um, let's create a new user. Bruce Wayne, Bruce. Um, let's modify properties of this guy. So currently, Richard Grayson is Batman. And before you guys all say, no, no, that's not right. Bruce Wayne is Batman. Well, if you're a real geek, Batman died in the comics. And Robin actually took over. So Richard Grayson is actually now Batman. So he's Batman. Okay. So that's me accessing the live Active Directory. Now... I'm actually on the box, so I don't have to type in the full server name. I'm actually going to change to local host 51 389. So I've connected. Notice there's no Bruce Wayne. If I look at the properties, there's no description. This is me looking at the previous point in time of that snapshot. Now, this is read only. Notice. I can't change any of these things. But straight away you can see, let's say, for example, Richard Grayson had been deleted in my main Active Directory. And I was like, well, I don't remember what groups he was a member of. I can go and load up that snapshot and I can say, well, member of, well, he was just in domain users. Uh, what was his properties? Well, <laughs> John's too lazy to have filled many of them in. But if I was actually professional, there's all this data that I can now take from here. And if it was a one-off, you may do it manually, but chances are more likely you would actually have some kind of script that would, for example, reanimate the objects so delete the tombstone to get the SID and the GUID back. So obviously, if I just go and create a brand new user for Richard Grayson, because I deleted him, it's going to get a new security identifier, a new GUID, which is an issue. It's going to lose permissions to everything. So... What I can do instead is reanimate the object, but when doing that, I'm going to lose most of the attributes and the group memberships. And then once it's reanimated, run a script that says, okay, mount the snapshot and then export all of his attributes and group memberships and then reapply them to that reanimated object. And that's what people are doing with these snapshots. They're, they're writing scripts and code that goes and does that for you. So you can actually see now I'm looking at a, a previous point in time. And I can do it with other things. So, ADSI edit. So, I can connect to the default naming context, to the default server, but actually I want to connect to localhost 5139. Because otherwise I'll connect to the live AD. So I want to actually tell it, no, no, go and connect to this instance. And again, I'm looking at my domain as it was. Again, there's no Bruce Wayne. This is that previous point in time. I look at the attributes of this guy. Oh, <laughs> embarrassing. 
so they couldn't get all of the attributes. But as we can see, it did get most of them. And one of the things we won't have is we don't have that description. So again, I'm looking at a point in time copy of the Active Directory now using ADSI Edit. Um, exactly the same thing would work for LDP. I mean, you, you see the, the idea here. Instead of 389, I'm going to connect to 51. View the tree. And again. Oh, I didn't bind. Whoops. And then once I've bound, I'm in there. I'm looking at users again. There's no Bruce Wayne. Richard Grayson, I'm looking at that previous point in time of Richard Grayson. And scripting would work exactly the same. I'd do any common scripting I used to do, but instead of connecting to 389, I'm going to connect to that whatever port I'm offering via DSA main. And that's really it. And again, when I'm done, I just control C. And again, it will write another event log um, that was shut down. Uh, I should actually have to see that event log, I guess, if I went into the roles, uh, Active Directory. Yeah, that's that's where it started my new instance. The time matches to when I started it. And then it should, it stopped the instance. Just showing me loading that snapshot through DSA main. And now I would actually want to go and um, dismount it. And that's it. So I create the snapshot. And then from here, I deleted it. So that's really it. So you saw me create a snapshot and then mount it then make it available via LDAP through DSA main. I accessed it through lots of different types of utilities. And it's just standard LDAP, there's nothing special. Just keep that DSA main up and running. And then we, need, we close that DSA main, we unmount it, and then you probably wouldn't delete it necessarily. And then we just exit out. Oh, exit rather than exit. Or we can quit even. It's been a long day. Um, let me quit out of NTDS Util. Uh, and that's really all there is. Now, there are some caveats around using it. So let's jump back to our presentation. So the common uses for when do we use this? So it's great for audit scenarios. So you can imagine I have a snapshot of a point in time. There's some problem. It's like, well, what was it? We have an audit that shows something changed. And in 2008 and R2, it's a lot better. It shows us the sort of after, before and after. But still, it's very useful to say, okay, so, so what was it like yesterday? We can just mount the snapshot and then connect to it by either using computers or ADSI, etc., and look at it. So it's very good to actually see how things were. It helps in object reanimation. So I can't copy objects. Um, mainly because AD doesn't let me just go and create a seed and create a certain GUID. I can't drag and drop an object from a snapshot. But again, with scripting, I can absolutely use the reanimation features of Active Directory.